Without a doubt, one of the most common questions I get asked is what is the difference between your iron setup and your driver setup? If you've ever been wondering this, stay tuned. This video is really gonna help. Let's get into it. Thanks for tuning in guys, Kerry Gray here back in the studio at Joondalup Resort. If you haven't already, please go down below, click subscribe, click that little bell so you get notified of all the great content coming your way. Alrighty, in today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about the difference between an iron setup and a driver setup. Now, one of the big things that we're gonna talk about today is the difference in how you address the ball in regards to ball position and then also the orientations of your body. And these are the two main key factors that we're looking for to create a functional setup for each of these clubs. Now, first of all, what is the difference between an iron swing and a driver swing? Well, it's as simple as just looking at the ball on the ground. When the ball's on the ground with an iron swing, what we wanna do is we wanna have a descending blow. So assuming my watch was the golf ball, when the iron club is moving down towards the ground, we wanna hit the golf ball first and then the ground second and then the club would rise. So what that's gonna do or encourage is the ball to get squeezed between the club face or the loft of the club and the ground is gonna shoot up there and let's go into the sky. This is how you're gonna get that compressed feeling that you're looking for. With a driver, however, the ball is teed up as you can see in front of us. So if we were to have that same downward approach what would happen is very commonly is if the ball was sitting up on a tee, the golf club would come in on too steep of an angle, it hit the top of the club and go straight up in the sky. Those shots that just pop straight up and don't go very far. So if you tend to do these, there's a good chance that you are setting up to your driver and you're hitting your driver just like an iron. Now, the general mechanics of the golf swing itself, as in the swing shape, don't really change. The length of the club and the loft of the club really dictate the way that you swing it, but there are some key differences with the setup that we do want to acknowledge and then start to implement with this change. So first of all, let's talk about the iron setup. And what I've got down on the ground here, just to represent this, is I've got an orange alignment stick. And what we're gonna do is we are going to place this on the inside or just inside my left foot. And the reason that we're doing this is we're going to use this as a reference for what we call the bottom of the swing arc. So effectively, if I was to get my two hands on the golf club and I was to push this golf club as far away from my body as possible and bend down from the hips, you can see at this point where my lead arm and the club shaft is fully extended, that would be the bottom of the swing arc. From this point, the golf club would rise. So if you imagine that this club head was drawing a big circle, the golf club would descend, 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 descend. It would have a bottom and then rise again. And we're simply just gonna use this orange alignment stick as a reference for the bottom of the swing. Now, going back to what I said earlier, with an iron, when the ball's on the ground, we need a descending blow to utilize these golf clubs, how they are designed to be hit. So if we were to have the ball position, for example, in line with that stick, well, we would only be hitting that golf ball at the bottom of the swing arc. We would tend to add too much loft and we wouldn't have that nice compressed ball flight that's gonna give you the most out of your shots. So what we do need is we need to have that golf ball slightly further back of that bottom of that swing arc, just so we can get a slight descending blow on the ball. Now what I've got here is a seven iron. And we're just gonna use this as a reference for where I want your ball position for every single iron and club in which the ball's on the ground and you need to hit down on it. Now from this, what we're looking for is to have our ball position as a general reference, one club head inside the lead foot. That is gonna give us that slight descending blow because you can see the bottom of the swing arc, it's about in line with the inside of my left heel. So the golf club would descend, 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 strike the ball, have the bottom, and then rise up again. This would give us that downward strike. Now with the shorter the club, you would stand a little bit narrower, which would effectively move the ball position a little bit further back. With the longer club, you would stand a little bit wider, something like a three wood or something similar. But with this seven iron, we want to get about our ankles underneath our armpits. From this position, you can see I've got my toes flared, which you can look at some of the other setup videos on why that's important. And then from there, we've got our ball position, one club head inside the lead foot. Now, this is a generalized template for what you want to try and look for when you film yourself or you look at yourself on camera or in front of a mirror. Now, from here, all things being equal, if I was to make a centered pivot 
and return that golf club back to the ball, the bottom of the swing arc would be a couple of inches in front and that would give me that strike that I'm looking for. So let's play that through. I'm happy with my setup, centered pivot, club descended on the ball, had a bottom just in front, rose up, felt really good off the club face, very happy with that shot. Now, if I grab my driver, let's talk about some of the key differences here. Well, you can see already I've got this ball set up further in front. Now, going back to my reference of the swing arc, the golf club would be descending, 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 have the bottom, so I would have already struck an iron back here. But now, look, we're gonna get this ball almost at the bottom of the arc and even slightly up on it. So you're actually hitting up on the ball. A great analogy would be that if you were playing tennis or table tennis or something similar, to get a top spinner, to get that real sort of powerful driving ball flight, you would wanna get the bat moving on an upward direction, which would effectively lower the spin on the golf ball to therefore send it the most amount of distance. If I was to hit down on it in this direction, what happens as a result is it creates too much of a difference between the loft of the golf club and the angle in which it comes from and it just increases backspin. So if you look at any of the best drivers in the world, they all have a high launching, low spinning ball flight with their driver and then these set up little changes that we're gonna give you are gonna assist in achieving that. So we've got our ball position right on the instep of the lead foot. This is going to assist in getting the bottom of the swing behind and allow you to hit up on it. Now still from this position, very commonly, when players get here, they tend to do this with their body. They tend to match their shoulders up with the ball position. Now all of a sudden, you've undone all your good work and you're more likely to hit down on it. So the big key difference that we're looking for here is with irons, you wanna hit down on the ball. With driver, you wanna hit slightly up. So one of the keys that we also look for in the setup is a bit of tilt with your body. And this is only just going to encourage a little bit more of that upward strike. So what is tilt? Well, tilt is the angle of your spine from face on. So with an iron, when the ball's on the ground, we can afford to be more, let's say, on top of each other. So if we use my shirt buttons as a reference and my belt buckle, the more on top of it I am, the more likely I'm going to swing down. With a driver, we want to have some tilt. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our shirt buttons and we're going to place them slightly behind our belt buckle in this position. Now, all things being equal, you can see that this would encourage more of an upward swing. So with moving our ball position forward and changing the tilt of our spine, we are encouraging that forehand top spin motion to get a ball flight, which is going to be high launching, and low spinning. Now a combination of this and good club fitting, you can really maximize your distance. So looking at the differences between your irons and between your driver, it's as simple as getting an alignment stick down on the ground and placing that on the inside of your lead foot. From there, we wanna have our irons a little bit further back of that, approximately one club head. And then with driver, we wanna have it on the inside of the lead foot with a slight amount of tilt to the body. With that tilt to the body, for me, the right-hander, getting my right shoulder closer to my right hip, that adds some angle to my spine, and all things being equal, it's going to allow me to hit up on the golf ball and get far more distance as a result. So if you're confused and you're struggling with hitting your drivers or your irons, having this basic setup template can go a long way in helping you improve your consistency and your ball striking with these clubs. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As always, please ask me any questions. Please subscribe and like if you haven't. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.